The approach that the Gnostics had to spirituality was that you had to come to know yourself. You had to have your own experience. You had to get to a place where your own inner knower was what guided you, not the rules that somebody else gave you. And the big struggle in the early church got to be between apostolic succession set up by an institution and an organization saying it has to be this way, and the Gnostics that wouldn't get in line. They, would, they refused to buy that concept because they had already had personal experiences that had revealed things to them. Now, all Gnostics were not Christian. They were Gnostics of all traditions. Gnostics, the, the word gnosis means knowing, wisdom translated sometimes, but it's really that idea of inner knowing or knowing by perception. So, um, death, in the in Kabbalah, Gnosis, and Sophia all mean the same thing. They're all ways to know. And how do we know what's right for us? We've probably all battled with that question more than once. And, and you battle with it till you come to a particular point where it's like the pieces drop into place. There's a da da da, and you know. And it has a feeling and a knowingness, and, and it has a, a surety to it. Gnostics looked for that. They had a belief that they had to, that we were not wise, we were not enlightened, until we had our own personal journey that led us to our time of inner knowing and that we broke through into a kind of divine knowing or a divine wisdom and then we were to live our life out of that. Now the church knew this because many of the early church fathers, the earliest ones, were mostly Gnostics. Paul was a Gnostic. So there, there was a lot that was very congenial in the first centuries. But as the church became increasingly concerned that all the people believed the same, that there was a code, uh, the, they didn't want Christians over there teaching this and Christians over that there teaching something else. But they did because there were so, only so many scrolls. And the, the written down scrolls were very valuable, and so a temple or a group in this part of the world would have one or two, and over here there'd be a copy and there'd be something someplace else. But no one had all of them. After a certain period of time, people began to want to organize it. And that was really the strong Roman and Greek <coughs> influence. It was a style. And so the idea came that we bring all of our books and scrolls and, and writings and letters and bring them together and have a conference. And these wise men, men because they traveled and culturally women didn't travel very much, they would come together and they would decide what it was that Christians had to give their allegiance to. And while we can say this council or this council, Really, there were many councils. There was, this was not an easy effort, and it took place over a long period of time. But in the process of this, structure began to, to supersede spirituality, and that's really what happened. The structure began to be very important, and the structure became so firm, so sure of itself, that it dared to persecute and even put to death people that believed differently. And so Christianity has a very harsh history. 